the Red Rocker, Sammy Hagar here. Welcome to another Rock and Roll Road Trip. Now this week we got a legendary guitarist. Where? As good as they get. Mm. He's humble, not really, Mr. Steve Lukather. <laughs> Steve, hey, Sam. thanks for doing this. Sorry, good man. to see you, man. Everyone I talk to about you, everybody talks about how funny you are and how fun you are to hang with and all that stuff. It's like, well, why, why didn't you become a comedian? Because you are funny. Let me tell you a story. Uh, Jeff Garland's a friend of mine. And he came over to the pool the other day, and we were hanging, and, he, and you know, he says, you're funny. You're funny, but you're not comedian funny. I said, I know that. He goes, I'm funny to my friends, but man, I'd never get up on it's the comedy hard. store, because comedy is not easy. Okay, Toto. Everybody knows Toto. Hello. I mean, come on. Probably had one of the biggest Grammy nights yeah, in Yeah, we did. That history. was way back in 82, yeah. Yeah. I mean, five Grammys in one night. What was it Nine. like? Nine? Yeah. Won five <laughs> Grammys. <laughs> Let me get my shit straight. Wait, yeah. That's all right. It's, 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 yeah, I think okay. you know that we won all, the, the collectively. Grammys, yeah. yeah, and I won one for best uh, R and B song for "Turn Your Love Around" that I wrote for uh, George Benson with Jay Graydon and uh, Bill Champlin. Well, there you go. That's the other thing. A lot of people don't realize how many songs you've written for other people. Well, I have. I've written a lot of songs. Yeah. I wrote that's, the tube stuff. You know, talk to you yeah. later, and she's a beauty with uh, Foster and Champlin. Once in a million girls. Fee Wable, the legendary Fee Wable. Once in a million girls. He was a great singer, actually. He still is. Yeah, and so are you. So yeah, as a singer, I can, no, I'm listen, like a this is what's guitar this, player that can sing a little this bit. This is I what I'm no trying fly. to get at. You're a singer. I'm like, no, yeah, I do it because I have singer. to. You're a good singer. You sing on key. You yeah. have you have uh, control. You're like Clapton <laughs> to me. Clapton's oh. a great singer. You're a great singer. But uh, everyone, if you say Steve Lukather, oh, he's a great guitar player. People don't talk about you as a singer. You say Eric Clapton, he's a great guitar player. I think. I think it's just because I, I sing only because I have to, and if there's something a little break for the for Joseph. Oh, well, you sing good. Thanks, man. I try. I mean, you know, sometimes it's live, it's loud, and you, you know, you miss one. You know, there's no frets in the voice. You know. You don't want to be a full-time singer. No, that's man. Right. <laughs> but no. About an hour and a half into the set, you're going, oh, oh god, let's dude. Get you know. Yeah, I mean, I have a lot of respect, man, especially at the level where you got to be screaming and shit, and you've always been very consistent. So, you know, I'm, a lot of deep respect. You know. What were you like listening to growing up? Like what made you Beatles, what, who you are today? The Beatles? Beatles was my on switch to life. It's like the Wizard of Oz where it goes like black and white to color. I was like, you know, eight years old, seven years old, and I saw it on Ed Sullivan and I said, George Harris, I want to be that guy. Who makes that noise? You know? I loved them all. Wow. When we all saw the Beatles, it was like there was the changed. life changed. Yeah. Yeah, and we followed them until the Stones came and then the British invasion and then of course you got Beck Clapton and Page. And that, that was my that, second that, tri too. that that my tri that triumvirate started a whole thing with guitar, you know what I mean? And then as that time got later on, it was the fusion guys would come in, and that and then Eddie fucking blew the roof off of everything, ah. you know. And, and and everybody did that ad nauseum to the point where Ed's going like, you know, I didn't mean to start a monster here. Who's the best musician though that you've ever played with? You who who is the guy? I mean, you've played with all these great guys. I haven't played with a lot Ooh. of these guys. Well, I got to play with Miles. That was oh. pretty cool. Uh, Wayne Shorter and Herbie Hancock at the Tokyo Jazz Festival. That was pretty heavy. Uh, I get the chance to move to different, like play with the funk guys with Quincy and all that stuff, and then I can play with you with you guys cranking up the, you know, live. I'm basically a rock and roll guitar player that studied theory and you harmony. Got, and uh, you, you know, take it and, one step beyond. And that. I make up my own parts in all the records and do this shit. So I mean, it's like I can read, but it's like, you know, they never hired me for my excellent reading, you know. They'd write out all parts of everybody else and they'd give me chord symbols because they'd I'd come up with parts. That they That's interesting pick up. that you can read because you don't play like a guy that reads. Because you can ad lib. You, a lot of guys that well, read. Well, I started that way. Yeah. Reading was done out of necessity to become a studio musician. How many sessions have you done for LA in your oh, life? Oh, man. Toto I, played on a lot of people's records, right? We did. The whole band. I mean, like, you know, you thousands. <laughs> Literally. That's unbelievable. If you look at the back of my book, my, my book, The Gospel According to Luke, shameless plug. It's so a number one, five stars. Uh, I explained the whole thing. It's in, in, in detail about all that, you know. Just how, how, what a wonderful time that was. We never knew what we were going to play, who we were going to play with, or who we were going to play, who the artist was, or you know, contractor. You go, yeah, Capital, um, Monday through Friday, 12 to 6. Okay, I'll be there. Barbara Streisand's there. You know? We're doing that wow. that day. Being a rock star is, is a pretty lofty dream, you know what I mean? <laughs> So you always had to have, well, if I can't be that, I still want to play. So like, you know, let me get into the studio thing because I was so enamored by it. you playing with all these great, I'm sitting next to Elton, he's playing Leave On for me while we're in uh, Barely's Alps at Super Bear Studios in 79. And when you get a call and you get like, you know, Quincy Jones needs your Elton wants you or, you know, Neil Diamond wants to do a record. I want to play with the Diamond. One of the greatest songs, he's so 
profound with the like simple songs like I am, I cry. It just gives me goosebumps. There's a lot of people that have longevity for a reason. Yeah. I don't think people realize who you are and what you've done unless you're musicians. Like you haven't been in the public, you've been in the public everywhere, but you're always playing with Ringo, you're playing with Michael Jackson, you know, you're playing, you know it's like you're in only- Well, I was, I was able to do both because I love doing both. I, I quit doing sessions like 25 years ago. Like, you know, I'll, I'll do a guest spot for somebody, a friend or something like, but I don't, I don't go to work every day going, what am I doing? Because it doesn't exist anymore. We were the last guys of the session guys that didn't know it was going to happen every day and were block booked 24 sessions a week. Plus, I was in a band. <laughs> so, yeah. oh, man. But okay. we made it all work. We just no, scheduled it. Absolutely. What happened on Total Five? I mean, uh, we what had, was it Bob, like? Bobby got busted. <laughs> and it put our name, you know, you know, forever put that name, you know, that, you know, the cocaine thing in front of us. You know, it's like, guys, how could we have done all that yeah. and be completely out of our minds? Now, did I have nights? Yeah, of course I did. But if you had a 10 a.m. session and shit like that, oh. if you didn't sleep, you better play good. I remember I rolled into a Quincy session once and he looked at me and goes, you've been up all night, haven't you? <laughs> I'm like, what are you talking about? He goes, he grabs me by the nose like this. He goes, you better play good for me. I said, I did. I will, I was due. Oh, but when you're Quincy 20, when you're, when you're 20. Grabbing your nose. Come on, that's a fucking No, 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 he wasn't necessarily so, looking no, for that. Saying, no, but I'm just saying, Quincy Jones. No, we were close the back then. I was working with him. I did like six records in a row with him. Was Michael uh, in, he, he, uh, involved yeah. deep in, in, in the music and stuff? He's such a, I mean, he's Well, when, when we when we remade Beat It to Eddie Solo and Michael's uh, lead vocal and a trap case on two and four, and Jeff went out and had, a, they erased the, uh, when, I, I don't know the story, that I've heard conflicting stories that Eddie cut the two-inch tape and screwed up the synthy so they couldn't put the master back up. That's the possible. All I know is that Jeff Picard and I had to go to Sunset Sound and make this record from scratch to that because they didn't want to keep they wanted to keep the first generation masters of the lead vocal in Ed Solo. Wow. So we Jeff went out and did a little click track, put a drum track down. Really second take, he nailed it. And then I I played the you know the guitar the the initial guitar riff and I played bass on it too. Damn. And then you realize the, who I'm talking to here? No, so I didn't no, know no, this. No, and I went to... I didn't know them, this. Steve, I've known you forever. I don't see how <laughs> you can sleep at night without going back and taking inventory and thinking about all that stuff and waking up in the morning with this beat your chest, call a guy like me and said, why would I do your show, no, you man. fucking it, little punk? It doesn't work like that. Oh, man. it doesn't work like that? I got a new record out. I'm I know. Promotion, I saw you and you invited me to promote. And with Ringo here. playing drums. I mean, yeah, so now, yeah, now, here I've, we go. So now, we've written a bunch of stuff to Beatle. I mean, I've gotten through, got to play with George and Paul and Ringo. Wow. George Three was a buddy Beatles. of mine before he passed, man. I loved him. He's the reason why I play guitar. He seemed like a, just such a down home guy. Oh, but he's they the all nicest do. I mean, guy. Look, Ringo, every time I see him do an interview, I think, he's just like me. Well, he's like you. He's right, like us. Well, here's you know, the thing you find when I see some cats like going off on some ego trip, I, mean, I go hang out with these guys again. <laughs> the guys that you would think would have thugs and limos everywhere. Nah, man. Yeah. Simple life, man. Brothers. 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 You've played with brothers, you know, ACDC brothers, the Kinks, uh, the Van Halen brothers with me. They're tough. They're tough. I mean, it's like... I get along with everybody. I do, too. I'm Switzerland. You're a Libra like I'm me. I'm Switzerland. Come on, we're friggin' Libras, right? Me, too. October 13th. I'm 13th. Switzerland, man. I mean, I got enough band problems without jumping okay. into your, uh, his or yours or anybody else's, man. I just shut the fuck up and play the guitar. But... I don't hate anybody. It's I don't, classically you know. tough, but did you see what I saw in Van Halen was the brothers going at it more than me with either one of them. I've and seen then you that. Get, I had three brothers in a band. Yeah. Oh, my God. Three at one point. <laughs> and then you get And when it middle. got dark, me and Paige would just go, let's go have a drink. Yeah, because when you try to get in the middle of two Slowly brothers Slowly I turn. It doesn't step work. By step. Is what I was going to get at is says, who is the greatest rock guitar player on the planet? Well, I mean, you know, you got Ed. At this point, I mean, he started. I mean, he started something that people have taken to another level. But he, it's much like people go. Ringo's drumming also changed the face of rock and roll. No, he's not Neil Peart. No, he's not yeah. Vinnie Caliuta. That's a great but, way to put it. But he's the only guy that when you play a drum track, you solo, do you know what song it is? He's so creative with his yeah. parts, and there was no click tracks on that shit. That was his time. Yeah. Those tracks were live. I've heard the stuff. You know. When we opened the Cabo And I was Wobble. so fresh. Yeah, I was there yeah, at the Yeah, I know, Cabo. That's what I was saying. And Eddie and you guys, you know, you were friends, and I, I didn't really know you much back then. I just remember when you got on stage with us, 
and we played rock and roll, I was going, from you. You had, you were pumping that groove so damn hard, you know. And, That's the I most mean, important thing. Yes, it is. I don't mind being a supportive player, man. No, I, no, I, you, I, you're solo like a... too, but I just remember you being so powerful. And I, I told Ed, I said, man, that motherfucker, he's going, he's a bad motherfucker, you know. And he acted like I was trying to dog you. So, no, I, I, <laughs> like he was standing up for you and giving you a lot of good I love, love. you, Ed. Well, I know, well, that's why I'm bringing this up, because I, I want to get Eddie in there, because you guys have been friends. For 40 probably years. Probably better friends than him and I. You know, I mean, we were in a band together, so we had our well, I've been in a band with guys I'm not friends with. So. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> There's so many great players. I mean, so many guys. You know, I got to do G3 with Steve and Joe. That was humbling, man. I was so honored to be a part of that. To be at that level with those guys, Mike Keneally, too, you know, and, and it's just such world. I love to play with guys better than me. I, re, I mean, I, I grow from. Where it. are you finding these guys? Well, I just mentioned a couple, but yeah, I mean, you know. I wouldn't say they're better. Joe's, well, Joe's a really accomplished hands musician. Oh, well, perfection! Knows what he's doing perfection. Perfection. He doesn't hit bad notes. Uh, he, he, I do because I go for weird shit and miss. <laughs> I go, you know, okay, not everyone's a winner. That's you know the stuff I, mean? I like, Steve. Okay, I have a thing called this or that. So you can't say, well, maybe, oh, well, oh, both, or, well. It's a very specific this yes, or that. This is how I find out about you. This, is, right. this, is, my, my, this is one that I study the most. So. Okay. <clears throat> Break it out. It's not that heavy. It's just simple. Give it's it to really me, It's just really clean. Okay. Toto or solo? Now, solo. Okay. Playing live or, like, writing songs? Playing live. Okay, great. Draw the line or Africa? It's hold the line. Oh. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hold the line. Draw the line happened after the game. That gig. was another. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, hold the line or Africa. And I was 78. What the hold fuck the do you want? LA was frozen. One then. was a giant hit, and the other one was a pretty good hit. Well, I like hold the line because I was 19 That's when I did I, it. It was my first one. It's a little more guitar heavy. I predicted that. Yeah. I told my wife that this yeah. morning. And Africa is as successful as it is. I don't make any money. Successful off of it. as it is, Africa is the biggest song yeah. in history. <laughs> but anyway, okay, great. New material or your classic hits? Like if you had to play for the rest of your life, would you play brand new shit or would you play, would you rather play your hits? Just remember when you first put the album out, it is brand new shit, but 10 years later, it's not. I know. But everybody wants well, to hear classics. the shit then. You know, they'll listen to a few new tunes okay, as long you as you enjoy playing with... your classics. Yeah, in front of people. You're not going to see me right. sitting around yeah. the house playing uh, Africa or something Damn like right. that. I'd be breaking guitars if Damn I did right. that. Damn right. I'm so glad you said that. I hate it when artists Oh, fuck, I don't want to play that song ever again. It's like, the oh, fucking number one hit. The no, no, you got to play the hits. It's a drag yeah, if you don't. Okay. You can sneak some music in there if you give them what they want. Give right? me a quick Sammy Davis. Come on, just give me a quick Sammy Davis. You are a delight. <laughs> I haven't done that for a while, so that was a shitty impression. I'm sorry.